Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Leaders MBA. Here I am. I'm Pablo Fernandez, and uh, here we are with the uh, two special guests, uh, Rita, Vitar, Rudy, Susani. Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to the Leaders MBA. Hello, how are you doing? Hello, I'm Pablo Fernandez, and uh, here we are with the uh, two special guests, uh, Rita, Vitar, Rudy, Susani. Hello, everyone, uh, Rudy? welcome to the Leaders MBA. Hello, how are you doing? I'm Pablo Fernandez, and uh, here we are with uh, two special guests, uh, Rita, Vitar, Rudy, Susani. Hello, everyone. Uh, the Hello, how are you doing? Yes, I can hear you, but there's a feedback somewhere. Okay, let's let me check. Yes, I can hear you, but there's a feedback somewhere. Okay, hello? Yeah, it works now. Okay, perfect. Sorry, it was, uh, it was like a technical problem. So let me introduce you, Rudy Susani. Uh, she's founder and hoster of uh, yeah, DS Talks with uh, okay, 20 okay. Sorry, years of the, uh, experience problem. in the technology field. So, let me introduce you, Rudy Susani. Uh, she's founder and hoster of uh, yeah, DS Talks with uh, okay, okay. Rita, can you mute a little? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, um, Rui, you have more than 20 years of experience uh, in this uh, technological field on uh, cryptocurrencies, on exponential technologies. So there are like uh, many things, many uh, a lot of talking about uh, this uh, cryptocurrency world, uh, this uh, NFT and non-fungible tokens, uh, these uh, exponential technologies. So it's something that is uh, really trendy right now and uh, it's really interesting and it's really evolving indeed indeed uh, indeed everything now is is about technology and uh, you know in a way it's luckily that uh, covid and corona changed things into this uh, advanced and more uh, technological perspective but unfortunately, it has its downside, uh, you know, touching people's life and so on. But it was a very big trigger for us to go into the space of and actually fast forwarding because the technologies was there, but the adoption was not actually up to the level of the technology. So I think the last two years uh, that technology is now giving more chances. We, we discovered what we can do with it. And uh, we've seen uh, how the boom of those NFTs uh, they boomed in the last three, four months. And this is a kind of a side effect because all of the technology was there, the adoption is there, the people were there, and then they were trying to discover what do they do with that technology and all of a sudden. Great. And uh, we have Rita as well. Um, Rita, let me just uh, unmute you. Uh, okay. So, Rita, Great. you are and, senior uh, creative uh, manager yeah. on Salus. Rita, we have to mute, uh, uh, I think, YouTube. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You. Oh. Uh, okay. Are you ready now? I can hear you. <laughs> okay, perfect. So uh, I was saying uh, you have uh, over 20 years experience uh, on the creative field. Uh, you're a senior creative manager at Sabus. And uh, well, uh, you have uh, like a different point of view, at least uh, from this creative uh, uh, perspective. Uh, so I guess that you have like uh, a great interest on knowing what's uh, going on with these uh, non-fungible tokens and uh, to see what's uh, what is going on uh, this thing uh, what, what works next with uh, with it right right absolutely i'm excited to uh, learn more from rudy and uh, get to know what uh, this hype is all about okay so let me just uh, put the the screen with uh, an introduction that what we are going to uh, show you uh, today Can you see the screen right now, the the logo of the mm -hmm. Leaders Bootcamp? We can see your uh, Chrome or yeah. uh, browser. 
yeah okay your dashboard so then it will be like easier yes to talk about it and uh Uh, so we will have uh, some topics to discuss today uh, related uh, to exponential technologies, of course, to digital transformation, but especially specific to NFT, to non-fungible tokens. So I think it's, it's worth to, to start uh, talking uh, about the digital technologies, exponential technologies, uh, and when they, how do you uh, can just uh, get on board and embrace uh, these uh, disciplines? Uh, we already met uh, our guests, uh, Rich Susani and Rita Vitar, and then we will talk about cryptocurrencies, fungible, non fungible, and uh, well, this uh, unbelievable uses of NFT that uh, we are just uh, having uh, nowadays that are happening uh, in this uh, art world. And um, we're gonna localize everything on the MENA region, and of course, uh, we will have your uh, questions uh, which we will answer uh, across the, the webinar. So let's start with uh, the first question. Uh, let's go and let's uh, start with something, uh, uh, well, like an introduction, right? Uh, what is digital transformation and exponential technology, Rudy? Yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, well, as we understand, uh, digital transformation is actually disrupting uh, the way we do business and disrupting uh, our work at the core. Uh, it's about bringing that something new to the table. You know, usually we have our traditional way of, th of doing things, and now it's actually bringing something new. And reinventing, renovating, and disrupting your own business and even yourself. So this is a high-level definition of really what is digital transformation. In short, it's about introducing something new, which is digitally uh, enhancing as a tool to bring a new product uh, for your business. Let's go on the exponential technologies now, or some of them will call it uh, emergent technologies. It's uh -huh. those, let me give an example what they are. It's artificial intelligence, it's augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, data science. Uh, you know, now in the medicine field, there's a lot of also advancements, nanotech and, and so on, or robotics, automation, uh, sorry, autonomous vehicles. All of those uh, are really on the, uh, exponential uh, technologies, which are really disturbing significantly uh, what we understand in the business sector. It's something totally new that are, you know, it's not traditional anymore. It's, it's bringing something totally new as the digital transformation. It is disrupting the way we do business as we know it. Look at the autonomous vehicles, how they are really disrupting uh, our world. Look at AI, you know, we don't have anything today that has that doesn't have AI, it's, it's an amazing, you know, world that yeah. we are in today. Yeah, it's constantly uh, developing like uh, new realities. And uh, well, uh, we hear about uh, cryptocurrencies and we know that they are, uh, well, highly related, of course, to, to blockchains. Uh, but what if a blockchain? Uh, how do you define a, a blockchain? Okay. Uh, first, let me try to visualize it and then, uh, you know, try to really uh, nail it in an example. Blockchain is kind of a system of recording. Let's call it a ledger. If you go to the bank today, you want to do business transaction. OK, you record in a database. Today, we're talking about purely a ledger. So it's a system of recording information. And what makes it difficult or impossible to change, hack or cheat? Once it is recorded on that ledger, it can never be removed. So this is a system of blockchain. A blockchain is essentially a digital ledger of transaction duplicated across different blocks. So let's take one block. It has my ledger of, uh, because it works in a, in a megabytes. Uh, but for the ease of the example, let's say it, have, it has the data of Monday. Once Monday is closed, okay, the data is kind of hashed and encrypted. This is very critical here. We're talking about encryption and hashing and no way to change it. That data is hashed and encrypted. And now we jump to another block. So you jump from one block to another block using that chain and so on and so on and so on. That's why we can always trace back the first transactions or always trace back all of our transactions. And most importantly, in a decentralized, where it is not centralized into somebody's, in a, in a traditional way of banking, 
in decentralized some, something like the Bitcoin uh, the Bitcoin network. Uh, then it is publicly available on the internet where everybody can query that ledger and can actually write to it. So this is in brief uh, what is a blockchain. Okay, Rita, first feelings about what the Ruthie is saying about the how, well, what's your feeling right now and uh, what's, uh, what's your perspective about the blockchain? Um, um, it's the new, um, it's the new uh, business today oh, okay. to follow um, in, in relation to fic, uh, fintech, for example, because we, we know that eventually um, that the, the disruption or what Rudy was talking about is that the transformation is going to be um, in cryptocurrency, in uh, the digital banking sector, etc. Great. And um, did you find like uh, any uh, direct use uh, uh, applied to to art uh, at the moment? What, what you have uh, listened uh, to at, uh, right now? Um, is it like something is, that you? Uh, well, uh, this is going to be part of our discussion, I believe, uh, tonight when we're going to discuss NFT and how it's going to be integrated as part of blockchain. Okay, let me just uh, put a, a, a well a video just to give some images about the a different uh, definition uh, to support uh, uh, Rudy's one and to understand uh, more about the blockchain. So uh, we can just uh, go and see in two minutes uh, what's going on with it uh, and uh, what was about uh, was about the blockchain. So in a moment. Can you see the screen right now? Yeah. Yeah. OK. What? We cannot hear sound. I think you have to share the sound. Uh... OK. Let me just try. Now? You need to, but we don't see the, the you're not sharing the screen anymore. Now? Yeah, it's not too much. The, the sound is. Uh, Yeah, it's not. Uh, uh, unfortunately, the sound is uh, is not playing. Okay, we're having problems. Uh, no worries. We'll continue. So, Rita, do you have questions for Rudy at this point? Um, actually, yes. Uh, okay. So Let's, if we can get started about, so what is NFT? I mean, what is it and what is it not? What do we know about it? Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, that, that, that's that's the, the $1 million question. What is really NFT? Uh, you know, everybody is trying to ask that, uh, that question. Uh, NFT is, in, in its word, it's a non-fungible token. Fungible, it means transferable. Okay. So in this world, it's a non-fungible, it's not transferable. So it's not, you cannot touch it in terms of, so it's fully digitized in that manner. It's uh, data kept in a digital ledger known as the blockchain, which we explained earlier on. But the difference is it works on the certification part, not on the something like the Bitcoin as a financial uh, means or, a, 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 you know, currency and so on. Uh, it certifies digital assets. So today I have a digital asset, which is, let's call, for example, before going into the other examples, I have my house deed, all right? So I, you know, that uh, paper which says I own that house. We can transfer that digitally and record it on that blockchain. And uh, once it is there, it is certified as a digital asset and unique because it has all of those elements. It checks the elements of that paper, uh, how big it is because it's a digital uh, 
digital file, that means I can, you know, measure many things. How many words, how many letters, how many whatever. I can do the hash value of it, which we spoke about it uh, earlier on in the blockchain, and put a stamp with time and date on it. That means this document with certain specifications and metadata inside that file, which if you change one point in that file, the hash value will change. That means this is not the original documents. So technically, it's a certification process uh, for a digital asset. And this is where we started seeing those tokens going left and right and, and so on. So, <laughs> uh, but let me go further which you asked also, which is not, uh, what is not a fungible token. This is not a fungible token. This $20 bill is not a fungible token. You know, I can transfer that to you. I'll give it to you. It's there. That That's the way, you know, you can really uh, try to differentiate what is fungible and what is non-fungible. Uh, so mainly these are digital art, digital assets, whether it's... Uh, a, a clip or a, a digital a paper, uh, art, or, uh, art uh, a video clip, a video clip, uh, a GIF file, uh, JPEG, anything How digital. About a tweet? I can, sorry, even a tweet what? because a tweet, a tweet has a certain value, value. once it is tweeted. Uh, you can calculate a certain hash value to it. Okay, so anything technically in the digital world, you have to calculate a hash value. Uh, if I give you a file, automatically there's a hash value. And this is what we do later on for authentication to really advise if this is uh, accurate or not. That's why I said, if you remove one point, that hash value has changed. That means this tweet or that file is not the original file. And what we're actually selling, not just the deed itself, it has the value, but we're actually uh, depending on the hash value outcome for it to be you know, certified. Uh, in it, but it can be any digital form that it can take. Right. Uh huh. Thank and you. Um, of course, we are talking about the blockchains. But is there any way? Is there any possibility in the future to think about any other exponential technology uh, in order to uh, relate it to um, NFT? Or there's no other plan. The only way to create an NFT is. Uh, uh, from the a blockchain at this point of time it's only you know it was created uh, back quite a while back but now the only usage is on, on that part is on that blockchain but when we talk about blockchain there's different blockchains here most of them are on the ethereum network you know the the competitor of uh, uh, Bitcoin which Bitcoin. is on a def different uh, network but that doesn't mean you know, it's only on Ethereum. We have other projects, uh, NFT projects that are not uh, on uh, Ethereum uh, projects. But at that point of time, they are still related purely to, to blockchains. We have to see and wait how will the future of not just NFTs, you know, there's many yeah. different uh, data or uh, digital means uh, that are not today uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, authenticated using uh, NFTs, but later on we will have use cases, maybe using NFTs or maybe using something else. We at this stage, it's it's still unclear. Rita, your time, your questions. It was um, it was once argued that the colored coins were the first NFTs to exist. So who really invented NFT? Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> NFT is not something yesterday that was created. It was created back in 2014. And the funny part that it was created by two guys, uh, McCoy and Dash, in a museum in New York. So they started this idea in a museum. So imagine what was their initial thinking. But let's take it further. Uh, you know, how, who invented and why did it invent and, and all of this. Uh, it's, it has some art value in it, in, in its inception. You know, uh, so that's something uh, we have to really look at. But let's also go, you know, some of the people you talk to them today, they say, ah, oh, NFT is only invented three or four months because this is the first time they actually heard of it. But that was in 2014, which is around seven years. But the maturity of the blockchain with combination of uh, the digital transformation, exponential technologies, uh, maturity of the people, COVID-19, 
and many aspects, other aspects, it was time for the people and humanity to be introduced heavily and adopted. Uh, everybody start adopting and everybody now it's booming. So we had all of those elements for the NFT to be, or not just to see light, because it was there for seven years, but actually to flourish and becomes a buzzword. It's uh, it's really interesting, and it's uh, really curious how uh, technology could uh, well make uh, all these uh, new uh, uses uh, possible. Um, it is really interesting to see how related is uh, art with technology in this case. I don't know how do you feel, Rita, about this uh, uh, this merge between art and technology and this uh, NFT, and what's your feeling? Uh, well, from your creator uh, point of view to be honest uh, having a valuable painting in the house or uh, going to a museum or appreciating art by itself has its own value its own um, uh, psychological value to oneself to look at that so it's amazing now how those physical arts or have become into a digital art and you can own them, own them as well uh, through NFTs. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think, uh, Rudy, we may think of, uh, uh, well, I don't know, to call it like a fusion between uh, fungible or not fungible, or to make uh, a fungible token uh, more uh, close to a non-fungible one? Uh, is there like any plan to make a kind of a transition between these two styles? Uh, you know, fungible and non-fungible is uh, is a way to different things. Same thing as cryptocurrencies. You know, uh, it's not a cryptocurrency. This is for sure. Uh, it is based on the same blockchain, but it is not a cryptocurrency. Uh, it's used as a more of a commodity of digital uh, assets. That's that's the main difference here. Uh, the other one, you know, Ethereum uh, for in specific, we cannot uh, say Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum is a kind of a, a digital currency which you can, you know, kind of trade with. But this one, it's not in terms tradable, but it is based on that Ethereum. But it's more of, you know, being able to hold that digital asset in your hand where traditionally you could not. I needed a physical paper. Was it in art, music, sports, or, you know, even mm -hmm. now when they're using it in entertainment. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's bridging all over the world uh, and it's giving a big part, you know, just imagine before NFTs, uh, especially uh, in, in the time of Corona, uh, people were sitting home, you know, let's say they are drawing, but what do they do with these drawings? They did not have an alternative. Suddenly now we have artists, which they have an open market for them where they can sell their art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that bridged, you know, we, talk, we always talk, you know, the Bitcoin network and the blockchain that was created by Satoshi Nakamoto. We always preach about the good thing about it is that we are bringing inclusion to people. Inclusion reached a certain point. Of course, we still need more inclusion. More people can adopt uh, sorry, uh, Bitcoin and, block and the blockchain to be more financially inclusive. But we needed something else for other people. And now we've seen it in the, in the NFTs. Yeah, of course. Um, they are thinking uh, about other areas where uh, NFTs uh, could be uh, applied or used uh, apart from art. Are there plans? Uh, are there any other implementations for NFT apart from art? Uh, are there any other fields where it could be applied? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, one of them, as I said before, your house deed, your papers of the house, that could be an NFT. Uh, if I want to do a kind of, uh, you know, a contract between me and you, so now we can do it over a digital uh, channel. Was it on smart contract or or anything else? So uh, uh, music, <laughs> it is part of art. Um, what other examples I can give? Um, I'm trying to really think uh, about other examples. Uh, certification of papers, you know, before you needed, uh, uh, what what do you call it, a notary? Today, you don't need uh, any notary. So that, that job description is being disrupted. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. 
So there's, there's many uses of it because it's a certification process. This is the idea of it. It's a certification process, which is digitally not controlled by anybody. It's, of course, controlled by a system, but not an, as an entity. So you don't have an opinion. You don't have, uh, you know, I want to, or it's on Saturday, I cannot do uh, that certification. It's open 24 seven, it's available for everybody and everybody can utilize it based on the code, not based on human sentiments or, you know, uh, anything like that. So yeah, as you can see, the use cases are, are many. Um, uh, let's think of, uh, for example, uh, Rita as a designer, as a creator. So if you uh, were to advise her just to go and try with the, a known fungible token for some of uh, her designs, uh, yeah. why do you uh, recommend it to her? And just thinking about uh, the benefits that it could bring to her and uh, by opposition with the, 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 the fungible one, uh, what are the advantages of uh, the yeah. non fungible one? Let's, uh, this example is for Rita and for the thousands of others that are available there and maybe hundreds of thousands of people that are into that space. Uh, uh, Rita have ha already, before starting, she has a problem, which is how she going to sell her art, whatever it is. The, the traditional means, okay, we're not talking, you know, in different geography, it's easier than the other ones. But let's start from, uh, you know, uh, underprivileged countries or third world countries where the, the, those trades are happening hand by hand. Now, a little bit more advanced where you have e-commerce sites and you have uh, payment gateways, but you need a lot of papers and you need to pay monthly uh, payments of that uh, payment gateway, which is very hefty. And you need to add this to your cost and so on. And you need to hire a developer, you need to hire many people, you need to hire the e-commerce website, you know, there's a big cost. With those non-fungible tokens, what they did is they created, there are many platforms, but they created a platform where the e-commerce of the future, I call NFT is the e-commerce of the future, is now available to everybody. Rita can now go to a website, which I think we will discuss later, and put her art or her things online without anybody because it doesn't need a developer it doesn't need a payment gateway it doesn't need a bank it doesn't need uh, me or you or anybody she can do it all alone and sell her art as simple as that and get paid with the non-fungible tokens which can be exchanged to ethereum and then you can sell those ethereums depending on the price was the fluctuation was it high or low as easily as that it is not as easy, but it is easier than going to uh, the, the traditional channels and going into the paperwork. And all of this, technically zero paperwork. All you have to do is username, password, and your email. Rita, any, any concern about the, this new uh, method? Uh, new, new, I guess new, I'm going to get new? started uh, as of tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll give you some <laughs> later on. <laughs> sure, you, I look forward for that. Right now, do you find it friendly, Rita, in order to, to start uh, just uh, developing uh, designs uh, on the, these platforms? Uh, how it do you feel? It sounds simple. The, the process sounds simple. I mean, uh, you could create something from a GIF or an animation or a, a simple digital art with a simple illustration of course, with a meaning and a value. But uh, as Rudy was saying, this, it seems the process is uh, straightforward. And uh, the good thing is that you don't need to be dependent on others. You could do it um, on your own, which is, um, which is a good thing too. So yeah. I, I look forward for your tips, Rudy, on how to get started. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, uh, trying to uh, locate the thing uh, in, in, in Lebanon, the Middle East, uh, the MENA region. Uh, what's the situation right now, Rudy? Uh, is it like uh, a proper uh, movement? Uh, is it like a dynamic um, strategy behind? Uh, are things uh, in movement at the moment? Uh, in terms of NFT, uh, it's still slow. You know, we only had the first artist, which was Lebanese, by the way, uh, Christelle Bshara, 
but she is uh, based in, in Dubai. She had her art, amazing art, because it has a meaning, you know. For me, when I connect to uh, art, which we will see some examples of other art, which really doesn't make sense to me, uh, you know, it has to have a sentimental value first. So luckily, a couple of months back, uh, this girl was the first in the Middle East, which she was highlighted all over. But after her, so many people started into that journey, okay? Because it's something new. Some people cannot even understand Bitcoin. You know, how can they understand NFT now? Uh, <laughs> they're not understanding Bitcoin. Bitcoin has been there for 12, 13 years now. So something with three months old or four months old hype, uh, now they want to go and jump into the non-fungible. So the peop the tech savvy people, they are jumping. The artists who are uh, really knowledgeable and open to experiment, and this is very important, they are open to experimentations. They are jumping into this uh, new field, but they are not big numbers. You know, they're still uh, uh, very small numbers uh, are to compare to, to the world. Um, is there any uh, local uh, platform uh, where uh, well any uh, NFT could be uh, developed or uh, nothing yet? One? You can be the no. first one. <laughs> okay, so I guess, and uh, I mean, if uh, you want to start uh, with an NFT, a uh, developing NFT, you will need to make use of uh, an international platform or tool or yes exactly you need uh first to uh, create that platform create uh, the the network create uh, the store create everything uh, you know but not just create them in terms of uh, it's web uh, 3.0 which is the most advanced uh, technology that is available right now but you need certain skills and and our problem in the area is the skills we don't have much skills on, on the blockchain itself this is another area which we're trying to tackle. You know, we have. We, I just finished before this. I, have, I was on the Arab blockchain uh, week for the whole week. Today was the last day. Uh, we have a problem of talents. Okay, for us to develop the network itself, we are not there yet. We need time. Uh, but there are. I'm sure there somebody is working on a project or somebody is working on something. Uh, on, on terms of blockchain, there are many trials there uh, in the UAE. There are many uh, also uh, trials and companies that got certified. But as far as NFTs, uh, it's still in the early stage. Sorry, still in the early stages. So would you say that uh, uh, it's required like, uh, well, basically more people uh, who are willing to, to start working on it? Uh, yeah, because yeah, uh, yeah. if you think of uh, coders, there are so many. Uh, but maybe it's, it's about that the specialization. No, the, the the problem is to find the, the people uh, who is willing and ready to start just uh, developing this platform. It's an experimentation because the minute they learn a, a new language, and twelve months down the road, and this is something also we've seen that language is obsolete. It's moving so fast. I'm talking about the network beneath. Uh, you know, not as a consumer or an end user. But the network mm -hmm. beneath is, is fastly changing. Uh, we don't have the full expertise yet. Uh, hopefully, uh, soon we will be you know, trying to create that and try to enrich that in our area. That's why it was the first uh, conference in the area trying to push that. Uh, we have to see. We have to see where this goes. Rita, any questions you have for Rudy? Um, yeah, a funny one, maybe. I don't know. Can you screenshot an, an NFT, even if without buying it? <laughs> uh, I can screenshot NFT. Yes, of course. Uh, but that doesn't mean I own it. All right. There's a big difference between this. You can right click, save it, open it and whatever. But that doesn't mean that you save it because how it works when I when I create that original art. OK, I can create versions of it. True. But when I upload that file to the platform, okay, mm -hmm. I upload it to something called IPFS, which in its term, it's an interplanetary file system. It brings out the value and the hash value of that file. Okay. okay. So now that file is equal to ha that hash value. If I remove or if I add a dot, a small dot in black to that file, the hash value will differ. 
So if as going to your example, if I save it, okay. I will save it, but I'm saving a copy that is not the original based on the hash value. Okay. So you can do whatever it is. Same as, uh, let's, let's give an example, uh, Van Gogh or uh, Picasso or Monet, you know, like taking a picture of it. Does it mean yeah. you own it? It doesn't mean. But I want to go back to your previous uh, uh, example on the cryptocurrencies and blockchain. Uh, in the UAE, uh, they have... They are, I think, the most advanced in the area in terms of the blockchain because they have a strategy. They're not achieved it fully yet, but they have a strategy uh, towards blockchain in general that was put by His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid in Maktoum uh, for Dubai. So hopefully with that, you know, we can really, uh, in the area at least, uh, in the MENA, we can start competing in the world. But... On the other perspective, we're, we're far away. Also, uh, on the mining perspective, we're, 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 we're not on the footprint in the world versus China, India, and USA. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're very far away. Yeah, just wanted to add that point uh, on the previous question. Okay. Do, and, we uh, noticed, yeah, sorry. No, please go ahead. Um, we noticed also that some of those digital arts are really have been sold in a very unsensible uh, amount of money. Some of them are in millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. Um, how is this? Uh, how is this possible for something <laughs> as tiny as a small GIF animation? We understand the value in art, but some of them are really not that sensible. Uh, how is this me, compared? Believe me, I don't understand it. Also, <laughs> this is the truly realistic, uh, but it's a hype. Yeah. At this point, many of the art is a hype. You know, uh, drawing a cat and selling it on NFT for, uh, exactly. let's say, for, for, a, for a simple $1,000 is, is still a hype. Uh, but that hype, why is it happening? Okay. Now, uh, we will, uh, I think we will uh, be checking a, a picture which I sent you earlier. Uh, we will see it now. now. Uh, the biggest art was sold an NFT, $69 million. If you look at it, it's a collection of pictures. But it has yeah. some history. He is the most uh, oldest user in, in the NFT. He's been working for you know a project for seven years. It made some sense. But if you see the art itself without the history, it doesn't make any sense. You know, I could have done it. Everybody could have done it. You know, my computer does it uh, by itself. There's a big hype on it. But why is that hype? First, We've seen due to the corona that hype on running on NFT itself, that it's a tool that we can use. Secondly, the second hype is, you know, since the beginning of the year till April, explicitly till April, people made big financial gains in terms of cryptocurrencies. Uh, Bitcoin jumped from 30,000 or 40,000 to 60,000. So people made a lot of money in just three months. So that excess of money, you know, and this is what uh, the person who bought it, you know, was testing out with a $69 million, you know, uh, it's not a test for me and you. <laughs> I, I'm not able to test with $1,000. <laughs> He's testing with a 69 million to see, and he, he became famous out of that. Uh, so, the value of money, the hype of the NFT, the hype of blockchain itself, and of course the, the, the money, uh, some of the arts, yes, it makes some sense to pay, but you can see some good art for a couple of thousands. Uh, yeah. or I'm not gonna say thousands because it is an Ethereum value in the end of the day. Uh, two, two Ethereum, 10 Ethereum, 20 Ethereum, 100 Ethereum, whatever it is. But uh, some of them make sense, some of them doesn't make sense. But that big hype is actually really, really hype. Rita, I don't know if uh, you just wonder, uh, because I am just wondering uh, how, to, how to buy an NFT, right? Because uh, I was wondering about that. It feels, it feels cool, yeah. Yeah, curious already. So what can we do to, yeah. to buy one? So this is the tips that I told you about, uh, Rita. Uh, for you to buy an NFT, or to actually display your art because you're you're also an artist. First, you need to go to OpenSea.com. Uh, it's a platform where you can put your art on it. 
all right okay. so without buying an e-commerce site and uh, you know paying how many dollars and uh, learning and you just have to put first art whichever you have a uh, file and upload it to that uh, uh to the open sea soon binance in june they promised that they will have uh, uh because binance is the biggest exchange platform so uh, by june hopefully you know until date 17th of uh, june we don't have the platform re ready yet uh if they open it it's gonna be a big bang so this is gonna push more nft uh and uh, the artist of course so for now, there are two or three uh, platforms, but the easiest one, because the other ones are more of, uh, I have to send you an invite, and there's limited invite. On OpenSea, you don't have that uh, okay. restriction. So you go to OpenSea, you create your account, username, password, and email, you upload your art, you upload your, uh, 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 your file on the IPFS, and then automatically all of the data that is related to it, it will be calculated and put on the uh, uh, website. Now it is displayed. You say how much it depends if you want to bidding or you want to put uh, a specific Ethereum price on it. And then you put it on the public where somebody else can come and buy using something called a MetaMask wallet, which is uh, integrated. And this is a bit complicated on the MetaMask uh, part because if you are not into the Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, coins, it's going to be a little bit, you know, uh, tricky because that MetaMask, you need a wallet in the end of the day. What is a wallet? A wallet which holds Ethereum or Bitcoin or any other tokens, uh, any other currencies. So you have to connect your MetaMask wallet to the OpenSea for you to sell. For me to buy, I need to connect my MetaMask wallet to my wallet, which has already Bitcoin or uh, Ethereum in specific, so I can send you some money. All right. All right. So it's two things that must be done. On the MetaMask level, it's a bit complicated, but it will work. All you have to do is transfer because the MetaMask, once you create it, it's, it comes with zero uh, Ethereum. You need to replenish it with Ethereum if I'm, if I'm a buyer. In your case, you don't need to do anything. All I have to do is just buy it and it will uh, be in your wallet directly. Okay. Okay, yes, let me just make a really small break. Yes, to, well, to introduce you not only uh, with your uh, current backgrounds, but with your um, Leaders MBA backgrounds as well, because uh, Rita is a current student of the Leaders MBA and Rudy is, uh, uh, well, uh, I, I would say like the, 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 the leader of uh, digital transformation and expansion technologies in module three. And uh, you can find guys uh, on this chat uh, a link that I just share uh, to try the, the platform where you can just uh, get a, a lot of knowledge about the business, uh, how to create your company, uh, leadership, uh, digital transformation, of course. Uh, you have uh, marketing, digital marketing. So many, many fields where you can just uh, make uh, your career uh, more exciting and uh, to go uh, deeper and uh, to, to learn and get uh, more knowledge uh, about uh, all these, these fields. Uh, so really just a quick question about it. What can they find on your module? Uh, yeah. what's, what do you are teaching everyone who are just uh, going to the leaders MBA? Yeah, sure. But before we go to, into that, uh, you can use, uh, uh, special gift code, which is uh, Rudy underscore TLB, R-U-D-Y underscore TLB. Yeah, I will uh, type it again because we, we already just... Get a uh, discount. We, you already just share it and I will do it again. Rudy uh, underscore TLB. Underscore TLB uh, yeah. So you can get the 50% off. Um, yeah. Rita, how's your uh, experience uh, on the Leaders MBA uh, so far? Uh, where are you at the moment and which model? Just let us know. Actually, I'm almost finishing module three. I still have the final uh, quiz to go. And um, to be honest with you, that was a wonderful experience because you get to uh, understand, do it at your own pace. You can watch those videos, do those exercises and the quizzes after each uh, chapter or module. So these are very helpful to catch up on your uh, knowledge. Um, it's uh, it's an amazing experience, uh, honestly. 
that's great to hear and uh, we are happy that uh, we are just getting the most of this experience uh because uh, okay. well it's uh, it's a real pleasure to to help everyone to, to get all this uh, knowledge uh, to develop uh, their skills uh, on these fields and to, to develop uh, is about uh getting up to date uh, every day and uh, to be to be able not to to, to face uh, all the potential or future uses that we can find uh, on our way and especially with this digital world where everything is uh, every day more and more complicated but we are and here if just I to... may if I may add just a little uh, one more thing about uh, the TLB bootcamp is that what it's amazing it's really up to date whether um, entrepreneurship skills fintech uh, digital marketing everything that's in today's world and how to move forward uh, in this uh, dynamic changing world so uh, this is the beauty about this boot camp. Um, it's uh, it's based on today's pace. That's yeah, really. Yeah, I, have to, I have to agree on that also. Uh, and you know, part of uh, the creating of the course, it's, it's it was about today. You know, uh, we yeah. talk about AI, we talk about the blockchain. We under, we you know we dive a little bit. You cannot dive too much inside, but we dive in it. We give that examples and uh, you know exponential technologies. What's happening there? What's the latest trends? What's 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 going on in the world of uh, those exponential technologies? Digital transformation. What it is? You know, this is at least talking from my uh, own experience in preparing that course and uh, preparing that module uh, it's you know what uh, rita said is very valid and uh, hopefully when you get also to uh, the, the the module uh, of digital transformation uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah of course um so let me just come back to the topic uh, because uh, we were thinking and talking about how to buy one but other question related is why to buy one NFT? Uh, why we should yeah. buy it? Why we should consider to buy one? Uh, I know that Rita is really interested about that question, but we uh, really want to know from you, Rudy, uh, what's the reason behind? Yeah, the why and, uh, and if we can make money out of it. Yeah, uh, okay, of course. Uh, the why is, you know, uh, as we already spoke about, you know, if you want, we you can find you can uh, NFT uh, tweet. Do you want to buy it? <laughs> In my opinion, it's not worth it. For others, you know, that first tweet on the on the network of uh, uh, tweet, it makes some sense. But for me, it doesn't make some sense. So art, you know, art has a value. It has a sentimental value. When I see beautiful art, okay, in a digital world, if I like it, I want to buy it. This comes, the second part is the price. What is really valued? Can we make money on it or we cannot make money on it? So as an artist, if I'm selling an art piece, for example, and this, because as I said, there's two different ways, and I put open bidding on it, if it starts from, you know, uh, one, for example, one Ethereum, and then somebody else likes it because I open it for 10 days, it might reach 20 Ethereum or 40 Ethereum or 50 Ethereum. That's the bidding yeah. process. Uh, if I go on a traditional way and I say this art piece costs two Ethereums, all right? It costs two Ethereums. Two, two Ethereums today is around $5,000. Two Ethereums in April was around $9,000 or $8,000, you know? So can you make money out of it? Selling that art for one Ethereum is already you're making money. The value of Ethereum is going up and down. So depending, and one day you could wake up that Ethereum value is zero. The other day you can wake up that Ethereum value is $10,000. So also depends on you what you're going to do. Are you going to be reinvesting in that Ethereum or are you going to just change it into a dollar value and then exit the market and then take your cut and you are happy. But it brought that channel where it didn't exist before in traditional terms. It was, you know, too complicated, uh, e-commerce and so on. Or you had to go into a museum or a gallery and there was commission. So all of this is gone. Now, the minimum, your commission fee is safe to you. And from there on, it's, it's a different world. 
And um, thinking about a transition, uh, as the one that uh, many of us had uh, just to go on Netflix, for example, uh, as a well as a video content platform, um, just to change our ways of uh, consuming um, video. Yes. Uh, yes. Is it very difficult to think of uh, this transition when it comes to uh, go and uh, buy this uh, one NFT? Uh, is it going to take a long time uh, to people just to get used to uh, this concept of, uh, okay, I'm going to buy something digital. I'm going to own it, of course, but it is not uh, something physical. So is it going to take a long time to get used to, to it uh, for people? Do you think it's going to be like a long transition? Okay. Uh, just imagine going back again. This is a seven, eight years project that has boomed in early 2021. Okay. Uh, in the first quarter, uh, there was $3 billion of sales, okay, versus the traditional crypto market value, which was which is $2 trillion. So in our opinion, yes, there's a big future and there's big adoption from uh, all known stars, uh, you know, uh, famous people. So it's going to be more and more and more uh, adopted. And more use cases are gonna be showing, and more you know investments, and more. Uh, so it's gonna take some time. I won't say it's gonna be this year. I won't say it's gonna be next year. But the the, the use cases are being now utilized more and more into this uh, space, so that it can be you know it can grow. It could become part of uh, your everyday work or your everyday uh, shopping. You know, uh, it's a growing world. $3 billion is nothing. Total value, as I think, if I'm not mistaken, total so far is $22 billion. It's still nothing. It's still in its infancy uh, as far as, uh, uh, you know, in that way of popularity. I see the future is way, way bigger than this. Okay. We are uh, talking uh, about the <coughs> NFTs, but uh, we haven't seen anyone yet. Uh, I, I know that you yeah, have like, you, one example. Can you show it? Yeah, of course. So let's see. Uh, And if you could explain us what we are looking at at the moment, the most expensive, the most expensive uh, NFT art, sixty-nine million dollars. You're just seeing sixty-nine million dollars. Uh, it's a piece of many pieces of uh, photos that was taken by uh, an artist. He collected uh, over seven years project, and he sold it as one piece over $69 million. So imagine this art, you know, for you, me, maybe for Rita, it doesn't make any sense without the background and the story because art for me, you know, it needs a story, it needs something, it needs, for us, maybe it doesn't mean anything, but for certain people, maybe it does mean a lot. So it's it's not a hype, it's not, a, it, it's a sentimental value. How do you connect to it? What is the project, what was it about, you know, uh, is it good, is it nice? Uh, but in that case, it's it was purely the, the hype factor of uh, of the NFTs. It's really impressive, but it's like a collection, right? Like it's like a proper collection. Uh, yeah, 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 so yeah. It's like going to a museum and then you get all the artworks and you get it all together and uh, you have it in, in your laptop, in any device, and uh, you have it there with you. But... That's the price that you have to pay for that magic. Hmm? Yes. <laughs> so it's something that uh, it will require for many people just to change their mind, no, and uh, to set like a new uh, mindset <laughs> and uh, to see things in a different way. Uh, so Rita, what do you think, uh, being a creator uh, of this, and what's, what's your feeling about it? Um, it's amazing. It's amazing that uh, there are no more limitations. You can create anything. Of course, uh, from an artistic point of view, to create something that's sensible, that has an emotional value, uh, that has a story, as you were saying earlier, uh, that speaks to the audience as well. So uh, I'm, I'm passionate for art, so I can't uh, resist when I see something beautiful. Uh, Pablo, I just sent you another link. I don't know if you can display it. Also, yeah, of just course. Just to make some sense out of uh, no, you know, some art, you know, uh, not just uh, see general uh, art happening. 
but to see some uh, uh, good art, uh, digital art, okay, with uh, digital artists that are really, you know, it has some good meaning. Okay. Uh, this example I'm sharing now is uh, Cristel Chara, which is a Lebanese uh, based in Dubai. So as you can see, you know, uh, this, this took a lot of time to produce, even if it is uh, digital. So this does mean for me something. Having this, printing this in the end of the day or having it on my desktop, but mm -hmm. is what is the NFT about it is having the ownership about it. Yeah. You know, it's mine. Same thing as owning anything uh, physical. This this photo cannot be sold again. Yeah, so it's, oh, it's it, it has this unique quality, right? So yeah. it's really difficult to, well, to think of a, a copy of it when it's something that is completely original and that shouldn't be uh, copied uh, in any way. Uh, so just thinking about the popularity of uh, cryptos and NFTs, mm, do you think, well, both, both of you, do you have the feeling that uh, NFTs are going to be more popular than cryptos uh, at some point? Rudy? Yeah, sorry. I, as I said before, in that stage, it's still too early. Uh, the amount of uh, you know uh, circulation is, is too low. Uh, we see a big growth year over year and so on, but it's not gonna overtake. Uh, in, my, in our opinion, it's not gonna overtake uh, at least the Bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, there's also a big debate between now Bitcoin and Ethereum network, uh, which one is gonna be more in the, to the future. Mm -hmm. uh, Bitcoin is always ruling uh, the, the currencies as uh, uh, the mother of all uh, blockchain uh, currencies. But uh, Ethereum has a future. Ethereum, you know, 80% of the other projects are run on Ethereum. So uh, NFT is on Ethereum. So there's a lot of, you know, big movements on Ethereum. But NFT itself, uh, I, we don't see it as a big, big, big threat. It's going to boom, of course, but not as to take over other uh, big uh, cryptocurrencies. Rita, let, let me just uh, tweak the, the question a bit for you. Um, do you think that the, this kind of art is going to be more popular than traditional art at some point? Um, we're moving into a digital world. Everything is becoming digital from, uh, from your finance to... Uh, to uh, your transactions, to anything. So I think this is becoming the new, uh, the new art, in my opinion. Definitely, I, I, um, I still favor the physical uh, painting available in your own environment, in your um, uh, own house. But um, definitely, I can see the future of digital art and probably developing even further. Rudy, uh, what's next for NFTs? I mean, is there any new potential scenario where everything could happen in the short run in a few months, years? Uh, there are going to be more adoption, this is for sure. There are going to be more work on the user interface. There are going to be more uh, work uh, on the user experience because, as I said, it is easy, but it has to have some certain... Uh, criteria to be to be met so there will be more adoption now as as i told you binance is adopting uh, because uh, it woke up you know binance which is the number one crypto exchange it woke up suddenly other people are doing something she is not and binance is a uh, is, is a big maze if you if you know binance i'm not doing an advertising for them they are a big maze in that crypto world um there will be definitely more use cases this is for sure uh, there will be uh, more utilization. Uh, that's the future of... of, of uh, so we might reach one day that even, you know, anything you want to buy will be kind of traded on that digital uh, ledger. Great. Uh, Rita, I know you have uh, one more question at least uh, left uh, for, for Rudy. Do you want to go um, ahead? Um, it's... It's... Uh, one thing I, I think it's how do you know that this painting is authentic or this digital art is authentic? How do you yeah. validate this? Yes. Um, 
Uh, let me give you, uh, I hope I still have it. Okay, let me first explain um, uh, the, 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 the logic of it. And meanwhile, I will send the link to uh, Pablo so he can uh, display it also. Um, as we said, a digital file has, um, Pablo, yep. I just sent you the link, okay? So a digital file has some certain metadata which are recorded in, in, in the file itself. Once it is available on that blockchain and, on, and uploaded to that IPFS system, uh, then we can have that encryption of it and we can have that hash value authentication of that file. It has become a digital uh, version of it. So it is recorded on the blockchain uh, on the ledger. It has its own transaction, its own transaction history. Uh, the file is there. The hash value is there, which can be verified by anyone publicly because we're talking about a public blockchain, which is recorded on a public blockchain. So let's go on one of the examples once Pablo will publish this. This is one yep. of the examples. This is directly from uh, the artist uh, itself. This is another website called the uh, Foundation App. Okay, this is uh, more for artists by artists, where they can exchange, uh, you know, the uh, uh, tokens, and they can exchange. I cannot go inside if I'm not an artist. Okay. So as you can see, uh, on the right hand side, okay, it is sold by one Ethereum. Today's uh, value is two thousand three hundred and twenty nine twenty eight dollars. It's owned by Three F Music. Okay. So this is actually the deed or the papers of that transaction. So that photo up there, which was on top, was sold to Three F Music. If you open View Ether Scan on the left hand side on the bottom, if you open uh, View Go Down, uh, Pablo. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, no, no, Here? Uh, new ether scan, the okay, first sorry. one. Let me go back. Yeah. It will show you the full transaction that happened. How did I purchase it? What money? Who sent it? We don't know who as in specific, but we know an address. I cannot see the, the website that it opened. Pablo? The, the website? Yeah, when you click, did you click on it? Uh, where sorry, what about view ether scan view on ether scan? Uh, oh, sorry, because I have to share the screen again. Sorry, um, let me just uh, share again. Sorry for that. No, because it's a new window, so uh, 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 uh ether scan, okay. So, you this is the full yeah. information of that transaction, how it happened. If you can look at the transaction hash. This was the transfer of money from foundation to foundation app. You know, you have all the information there publicly for everybody to view that this transaction has happened and to buy this certain uh, piece of uh, art. Original file, right? Now, if I download that file that you can uh, uh, see in, on top, which was on the previous slide, and I sell that file, it's a different hash value it's because it's different. But I don't own it. The original file is here. And it will be small. You cannot print it. You cannot, you know, versus the big file. If you, you can right click on the image, go on top and right click on the image, you can save it. Yeah. Right? But that's not the original file. This is the original file. And this is the page to prove who bought it, how much he paid, what did he pay, all of the information, what is the hash value of that file. So imagine, remove the art, imagine I have a deed contract of my house, mm -hmm. you know, or a paper I want to authenticate at the notary instead of that photo. So you f f think of the use cases uh, that we have. Thank you, Pablo, for uh, for sharing. No problem, my, my pleasure. Uh, so let us just to finish with, uh, let me introduce uh, Albert Rodriguez, which is our student relations manager. And he has like uh, some more questions to uh, formulate. Uh, let me just stop uh, sharing the screen and saying hello to Alberto. Uh, we can hear you now. Hello, Alberto. Hello. 
How are yes, you? Hello, How you can hear me? Ah, great. Yeah. Fine. Doing great. So many of you uh, could uh, know Alberto is a student relations manager. Uh, you will be in touch with him uh, very frequently. And um, well, Alberto, I know you have some questions uh, for for Rudy. Uh, something to comment uh, around the NFTs uh, topic hype uh, trend trendy. Well, um, I do have a couple of questions, and some of them have been uh, more or less answered already. Um, but uh, for example, um, uh, one thing that that that, uh, that I ask that we would ask is uh, uh, is investing in in nfts similar to investing in the in a sector of the stock market for example investing in the art market you now that we're talking about our art without without knowing about our art can i uh, just buy uh, um, nfts uh, of that particular art market uh, speculating that the prices would go up, for example. I mean, uh, can I then sell these this, uh, yeah. yeah. coins yeah. as if they were assets, although the, the, the word is not exactly coins? It's a digital asset. Digital yeah. asset. So it's okay. an it's asset. asset. Yeah, yeah. In the end of the day, it's a digital asset. It's an asset, but it's a digital asset. Uh, I think Rita asked this question, but I actually responded in terms of the financial, you know, gains now. But as you know, art doesn't have value. That's one. If we look at Van Gogh, while he was living, Van Gogh, did, you know, he couldn't sell, he couldn't live out of his art. When he died, you know, art made sense for the world because he created a new norm, a new type of art. So while living... This is one example. You know, the art didn't make sense. So when he died, it made some sense. Same thing here. And also you will see limited editions. And now more and more people, famous people, are going into this space to try to create certain art, which one day, okay, because they are famous, that art of for them, it belongs to them, but it, you own the ownership of now, it might go up in price. Maybe someone created a new way of art similar to Van Gogh on a digital perspective. And later on, you know, he died and then the value is up. So yes, in one point of view, yes, you can. Uh, same thing now you can trade, you know, uh, when we were kids, we used to uh, buy uh, those, uh, those cards of uh, football players or basketball players, you know. Those are collectibles, right? So if you hold certain uh, names and you forgot them for 20 or 30 years, and then now you want to go and sell them, you might be selling them times 10 the price or times 100, depending what is that paper, right? Yeah. So imagine uh, now EA Games is going into this space, okay? EA Games sponsors those artists. So if they create with those famous game players, for example, if they do it with Michael Jordan, okay, they create those digital cards now because in the back in the days it was a physical paper. Now mm -hmm. it is a digital paper or digital card. And later on with limited edition, you know, with biddings and people want that product, it can go in a certain value, which it is now you can buy it for one Ethereum or two Ethereum at market price 2000 plus, 5000 plus. But maybe in five or 10 years, because it is very limited, it might reach 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, depending who wants it. So it's the same thing, but it's more on a digital uh, level. But we are losing, as Rita said earlier on, the touch value and, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit different. But that's the future uh, where we are living in. Yeah, of course. But uh, uh, you are talking uh, as well about surrounding the art with uh, with branding no because they are using these uh, sportsmen famous sportsmen yes, or yes. these big big companies where you are just uh, in pricing everything and uh, well in the end i mean the brand van gogh it was evolving across the years it was exactly. growing across the years but it was a 
uh, something who was created uh, some centuries ago, while now it's on the, we are just selling things that the, was created yesterday. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If it does a different system. That's why I gave two different examples. Uh, yeah, actually more examples too. exactly. Yeah, because it can come from different perspectives. We cannot yeah. say it's coming from this way or that way or that way. We don't Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Alberto, more questions? And well, I don't know if uh, this has been already sort of answered in which other areas, which are the areas, maybe this is a little bit of speculation, in which other areas do you see more potential for uh, this um, NFTs, which other sectors of the, of the market, apart no, from the arts? Yeah, as I, as I told you, uh, this is another example, which is the games uh, area. Uh, we can see it as, uh, you know, standardizing the, the notary services where you can bypass a notary today worldwide. So it is disrupting notary. You know, uh, if I want to sell something to you, forget whatever it is. So I want to transfer uh, physical something paper to you on uh, perspective. Uh, now I can do it on NFT. I can sell you mm -hmm. the papers, the original papers, and then officially it is on a public ledger. Same idea of, of art, but in a different perspective. We will see it in medicine, also authenticating of papers and so on. So uh, it's going to be a, from different perspective. Art is music also. So we're seeing the music uh, perspective also being in this NFT. Uh, so there's many applications that are uh, being onboarded of this uh, NFT, and it's going to only grow and grow and grow. Okay, I think, uh, uh, I don't know if you have any other questions or something that uh, you may be uh, dubious about uh, at the moment. I think that we have just uh, uh, stayed and built up like a good picture of what the NFTs are. And uh, now, at, at least myself, I feel that uh, I could start just... Uh, developing my, my platform. I don't know if uh, Rudy is just uh, uh, waiting to start, if uh, he started developing something, or if he's uh, on the way of uh, any new project that could be related to NFTs. Uh, it is uh, the case, Rudy, or uh, you are still waiting to see uh, how everything moves in on, on the, the region? Uh, well, no, I'm actually <laughs> not in terms of uh, development, in terms of development. I'm actually uh, working on some personal art that I uh, worked uh, for a while uh, to, be, uh, to be actually uh, displayed, but not in terms of... Uh, I'm working on uh, more on training perspective uh, and uh, to bring this as... Uh, to normalize it and democratize it more because uh, it is... Even with all of this hype, it is uh, still undervalued. Uh, people are not aware. You know, if you look into your surrounding, out of 10, you get two, which is still uh, very low. Uh, so we're trying to really more uh, commercialize it uh, and push it. And because this is, for me, you know, one of the elements of digital transformation. And uh, I have received many uh, queries from different people that they want to go into that space. So we are uh, consulting them into uh, working and, you know, producing art and transferring their journey into the uh, digital journey. But on a personal perspective, I have not, uh, I'm not, I'm not even looking into that space. Rita, did you get any inspiration for a new works or new projects? At least I got some good insights from Rudy today, which was very, very helpful. Uh, thank you again. And um, I'm hoping uh, maybe I should dig more into what uh, art I'd like to work on and uh, probably publish in one of those platforms uh, Rudy just mentioned. So um, it's uh, thank you. It was very insightful. Thank you. I hope you get you know an output out of this. And maybe also the viewers, they can start their journey. That's the most important part for me and for all of us is to really try to understand what is NFT and try to really simplify it in a way where everybody can somehow, you know, venture by himself, okay, and uh, achieve uh, the end result, which is either as a seller or as, a, you know, as an artist. We absolutely agree with you. Uh, Rita, Rudy, it was a real pleasure to host you. Uh, Alberto, thanks for a your pleasure. help. pleasure. And, uh, yeah. well, I hope to see you around in the future because we will be having, like, more activity uh, on the following uh, weeks. 
with more webinars. And uh, I hope that they, we can just uh, keep in touch uh, very soon for everyone. And uh, just a reminder, our Instagram account, you can see it in here, instagram.com, the, the list will come, uh, where you can find a lot of information, content, a lot of value that we are sharing every day. Uh, we have lost Rita. Uh, I don't know if we can just say, uh, get her back, get, get she back. Uh, Rudy, thanks Sweet. for your time. Thanks for Thank you. your uh, okay, very, help, for your collaboration. Very I, and uh, I didn't know they were they were uh, NFTs have been there uh, uh, around for a while. I mean, I, I I thought it was a new term. I have uh, been listening about cri cryptocurrencies for a while, but NFTs. So uh, I don't know. I mean, fa fascinating how fast everything is 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 changing, is developing in this just two years i mean yeah yeah that's that's the thing you know you, you're gonna wake up next month hearing some new acronym with a new technology based on a blockchain and then oh i didn't know about it we're all in that you know space uh technology is really 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 taking us by storm uh, learning and relearning <laughs> so Rui, just to uh, tell people where to find you uh, on YouTube, for example, I know you have uh, all these DX talks every Wednesday, if I'm not wrong. Uh, we have two versions. Uh, one version is on Monday uh, on uh, Zoom. The other version is on Wednesday, which is Crypto Talks uh, Wednesdays. Uh, we're available on uh, YouTube, uh, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, uh, you name it, we are there. Uh, Rudy Shushani or uh, DX Talks uh, anywhere you wanna you can find us. Well, it's uh, really recommendable just to uh, watch these videos, uh, these webinars uh, with Rudy. He's always really helpful. Just explain uh, everything. Let me just uh, get Rita. Rita back. Just to Sorry, uh, to say to, to thank you for uh, your presence, your questions, uh, your collaboration. You. And we hope that uh, you really make the most of this experience at the Leaders MBA. So uh, for every, any viewers, uh, we are just uh, starting to, uh, well, to, to launch. Uh, we are launching in September the fourth core. You already have uh, three cores of students. So, uh, well, the, the page, uh, the Leaders Bootcamp.me. You have here, again, the Instagram. Uh, account where you can uh, just uh, look all the content that we are just uh, posting uh, every day and every week uh, information about uh, well what an MBA is and uh, what you can do uh, now with a special price uh, 3,000 living pounds uh, the exchange rate $495 for the whole MBA so thanks everyone for staying there uh, Rudy, Rita, Alberto uh, hope thank to you. you very soon thanks a lot uh, have a nice thank one you. and a nice evening and uh, bye bye Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Have a nice afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you.